is my point. I am a professional futurist. I know that all of you are so busy on your day-to-day -day life, it's the equivalent of watching the basketball being passed back and forth. But there is this 800-pound gorilla that's walking right into the middle of our life in the form of emerging technology, and most of us aren't aware of it. But if you want to prepare this region for the future, you have to become aware of it because... As I was writing my book, Jump the Curve, I decided to put this notion of exponential growth into Google, which didn't exist 10 years ago. The very first entry that pops up is Wikipedia, and it, then I, I go on, and there's this bizarre word on it. It's called Zenzizenzizenzek. And I go, what the heck is that word? Uh, and I imagine you're wondering what Zenzizenzizenzek means. Well, here's what it means. It means two to the eighth power, and I thought, that's pretty close to what I'm trying to get people to understand they're going to have to deal with in the future because of those nine technologies, there might be one or two that don't double 10 times in the next decade, but every one of them is expected to double at least eight times. In the year 1910, there were about 20,000 cars in this country. There were 1,000 miles of paved road, 50% of the population lived and worked on farms, and life expectancy was 47. Today, life expectancy is 80. There are a billion cars on the planet, and less than 1% of the population lives and works on farms. I think we can all agree we've seen vast, sweeping, radical change. But now what the scientific community tells us is, whoop, we're going to see a comparable amount of change in the next two decades. That's what we all need to be preparing for, and that's why we have to jump the curve. Now let me give you... Two years ago, there was a famous robotic car-driven contest, and only nine of the 30 cars finished the race. But if you look at these exponential advances in robotics, they're going to follow that exact same trend that the automobile industry followed. And if you look at what... Georgia Tech is doing, and if you look at what they're doing out at Fort Stewart, does Savannah have the opportunity to become a leader in robotics? Absolutely. About nanotechnology, because it helps show the, the point. Um, my tie has nanofibers in it, and if I was uh, unfortunate enough to uh, spill on, uh, on this, it would just roll off. And what doesn't roll off can just be whisked away with a, a paper towel. But here's my point, is many of you might be saying, well, I don't need to know about nanotechnology. Well, if you're in the dry cleaning industry, do you need to know about this technology? Absolutely, because here's why. Three years ago, you need to think about this. How many of you remember the 1991 hit movie, Pretty Woman? Richard Gere's character at the beginning of the movie, he's a super successful businessman, and in order to denote that he's a super successful businessman, what do they show him using? It's this brick-like cell phone. And in 1991, it only belonged to the elite, and it did, it cost $5,000. Now the other picture I have up here is the sign of the times. It's an unemployment line out in Wall Street. But if you look closely, what is every individual holding? It's a cell phone, but they don't just make calls. You can access the internet, you can social network, you can play every song you, you own in your, your music library. My point is, technology has this way of getting better, faster, and cheaper, and as it does, it diffuses out. So there are technologies today. Hey, your performance. But I got married, I have young kids, and uh, I wasn't able to go to a concert for 10 years. I finally went to one uh, two years ago, and what was the big difference? What were people were holding up their cameras on their cell phones? I thought, wow, that's a big shift. And then I went back to another concert last year, and you can now have the Zippo Lighter app on your cell phone, and you can flick it open and, and light it, and you can go, woo! Uh, but I tell you this because I think it's a wonderful metaphor for the future. We're going to do many of the same things we've always done. We're just going to do them in a different way. And soon, you and I are going to...
are going to be able to sequence our individual genomes, and it is going to revolutionize healthcare. It is a future that is coming, and in order to be prepared for it, you have to jump the curve and start thinking about it today. If you start thinking about it in four years, you'll be behind the curve, and you don't want to be there. say, look, how can we not only improve our tourism industry, but how can we use these tools to fundamentally redesign the education of the future? You're going to see some amazing opportunities, but it requires you first to jump the curve. Solar technology, not going quite exponential growth, but it's getting significantly better. So my point is, today only the wealthy can afford to put solar cells, but like Richard Gere's cell phone, the technology is getting better, faster, and cheaper. We're going to create solar farms, and then soon we're going to be able to start cranking this stuff off on roll to roll, almost like wallpaper, and you are going to be able to create, put it, wrap your roof with these solar cells. You're not going to be able to meet all of your energy needs from it, but it's going to become a much bigger part of the energy equation. Uh, synthetic biology, everyone has to put on their radar screen. Last week, there was a huge story. I would argue it's not only the biggest story of this year, not only the biggest story of this decade, but arguably the biggest story of the next half century. <clears throat> and does anyone know what I'm referring to? It's the creation of artificial life. Artificial life. This is a huge deal, and what we're going to be able to do with this advance is we're going to be able to create what they call designer bugs. And what these designer bugs are going to be able to do is they're going to be able to eat carbon dioxide, which most people think is bad, and then th these bugs are going to be able to produce anything from pure gasoline to biodiesel to hydrogen. This technology has the potential to fundamentally change the energy paradigm. So what does this mean? I'm just going to give you a couple of practical things I think that everyone has to do in order to prepare for this future. And the first thing is we all have to unlearn some things. I'm going to give you a little quiz. I'm going to ask all of you to think what two colors are the yield sign? What two colors are the yield sign? I know that 80% of you are saying it is yellow and black. And that was right up until 1971. The yield sign has been red and white since 1971. And I know some of you are going, no way. I'm going to check that out. But believe me, as soon as you get out of here, the first yield sign you'll see will be red and white. But I use this as a metaphor to say, look, all of us hold inside our head information that was true at one time, but it's no longer true today. And we're going to have to unlearn many of the things. I want this region to believe in doing the impossible. And I don't say that in a Pollyannish, ah, oh, geez, you can do anything sort of way. I want you to give, I want, I'm going to give you my final exponential growth analogy. I have a piece of paper. If you could fold it 50 times, each time it would get smaller, but it would also get thicker, right? So after the 50th fold, how thick do you think it would be? And I asked my wife this. And she remembered the tooth fairy analogy with my son, and she was still a little peeved at the lily pad analogy. And she was bound and determined not to be outgunned this time. And so she goes, oh, I don't know, Jack, 10,000 miles. I said, well, uh, that's better, honey, but you're off by a non-trivial 62 million miles. It's a mathematical fact that if you could fold a piece of paper that high, it would reach to a level that sounds impossible. Right? But it's not impossible. It's a mathematical fact. I bring this up because not all nine of those technologies are. And that's what true leaders do, and that's what CETA is doing. True leaders don't just discover the future, you create the future. And if you keep that in mind, you're going to have a wonderful future. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.